All right, all right, all right. Matthew McConaughey style. Here we've got two 15 inch uh, base drivers, both equally fucked, but in two different ways. Um, this one's showing no continuity, so there's no connection between plus and minus. Uh, it's also showing a bit of distortion around the cone, which is interesting. Um, this one is showing continuity, but it's got a weird sound, which I don't know if the mic's gonna pick it up, but. There's a bit of scraping there. So that's the voice coil former, the, the, the cylinder that the, the wire is formed on in the coil. It's distorted, probably from too much heat. Um, it's on the back of the amp, it says it's 300 watts RMS uh, output. This thing with a nice little cockroach egg right there. I'll be sure to put that back on the replacement. Uh, it's saying on the back of the speaker somewhere Oh, maybe not. Wrong one. So this one. Yeah, okay, I'm ass about. So this one was in a 300 watt, reportedly, uh, RMS output amp. And it's saying 250. And it's not a massive problem until you drive the thing into serious distortion, power amp distortion. Um, it would probably handle a clean signal, not with any problems. This one handled the power, but the voice coil form was made out of some kind of crap that's deformed under heat and now it's starting to rub on the pole piece in the middle. Um, so what I'm going to do is rip them apart and try and find exactly how they failed. Uh, I've got replacements on order so they should be arriving in the next day or two. Uh, so let's rip it apart, eh? And find my devices of destruction. Chisel. Probably should be prepared before I start this kind of bullshit but anyway. Since we're not really worried about repairing these things, let's just go out it. So I've ripped the former there. You've got the, the two leads connecting the coil. Snip them off. And we should be able to lift the whole thing right out. It's still got the spider holding on there, which is a, another suspension thingy. It looks like this one's made out of Kevlar. Now I've got Eminence replacements for these which are rated at 400 watts RMS. Um, oh, um, they should be more than adequate. Here we go. Ooh, look at that. You can actually see the soot there where the copper is has fused or whatever. Oh, and look at that. You can see where the smoke's come out of that one. Um, it's, oh, he's done a good job of that. It's vaporized that length between there and there, you can see. Um, it's, <laughs> hey. It's just burned the living fuck out of it. Look at that. So, uh, yeah, someone had a good time with this one. So, a lot of these amps don't have any limiting, especially the budget ones. Um, so once you push them, they start clipping and they start almost delivering a square wave to the speaker. Now, there's a lot of contention over this, but it seems logical and a lot of guys saying guys that know a lot more than me when you start delivering a square wave to a speaker it's obviously it's, it's average voltage goes through the roof um, and the cone's not moving so normally it's nice movement like that there's constant airflow and that coil relies on airflow you can see the vent there which which helps with the airflow um, as the speaker cone moves, it'll move air in and out, and that will help cool the coil. Um, when you've got a square wave, it's less nice moving like that. It's more like, eh, 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 eh. and um, at those extremes, it's not moving at all. So it's not as smooth an airflow. So there's not as much cooling. Um, really, you shouldn't be driving your power amp in a base amp, solid state amp at all. 
uh, into into overdrive because you're going to start to get this kind of drama. Now you can you can blow up one of these speakers with uh, say you've got a 300 watt speaker you can blow it up with a with a 50 watt amp because it's going into hard overdrive and and 50 watts uh, when it starts distorting it, it it can really it can blow a much more powerful speaker than 50 watts. All right, so that's that one. Now let's go on to the pole piece rub. Since the missus is out at netball, may as well have some pole piece rub with you guys. Um, let's just cut this fucker as well. Pity about the nice blue cone, but really it's a piece of shit. Blue or not. It's all marketing bullshit. It's off a uh, ash down. What do they call it? A blue something? Electric blue, electric blue, like that ice house song. Let's do the same thing here. We'll cut the fuck out of it. Again, you can see there it looks like Kevlar. Oh, isn't that a shame? Oh, it smells weird. It smells like fucking some kind of sweet. I don't know. It smells like when you when you leave milk in in the fridge too long and it's got that sickly sweet smell. I don't know what the fuck that is, but it can't be good for you. Alright, let's pull it out. Oh, it's still hanging on by a thread. <sighs> it's a shame to waste that one because it doesn't appear to be much wrong with it, but you can see there where it's been rubbing on the pole, it's an aluminium former. Often they use Captain. It's K-A-P-T-O-N, not Captain. Um, you can see it's been rubbing there. It's been rubbing there, and it's been rubbing there. So it's probably deformed from overheating. Captain doesn't deform as much under heat as aluminium does. Aluminium will change its shape, and then it'll rub against the pole piece. And when I say pole piece, I'm talking about this piece in here. And you can see there's only a little narrow window of opportunity between the magnet and the pole piece. As soon as the, the, the trying to keep that gap small concentrates the magnetic field and makes the speaker more efficient. Um, but having a smaller gap means you've got less room for movement with heat. So when it heats up, when you're abusing the speaker, uh, it'll start rubbing on that centerpiece. And, and the symptom of that is ghost notes, what they call ghost notes, so funny little notes that are happening not related to the, the note that you're playing, um, and distortion at low volume. When you crank the fuck out of it, it sounds pretty normal, because the volume of the little scratchiness in there isn't much compared to the volume you're putting out. Um, it'll only get worse though, so there really is no way to replace that other than replacing the speaker itself. Um, so there you have it. Now I've got some fucking... Oh, there's my razor blade. Now I've got some uh, cool things to make, I don't know, a coffee table or something out of it. What do you reckon? Fruit bowl? Something like that. <laughs> Who knows? Anyway, there you go.